Hey everyone, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. I wanted to highlight a way to create a duplication pattern inside of Fusion Cam using uh, this part and these three vices that I have on my screen. Now, you can see that it's pretty easy to fit three of these vices up on this VF3 table, um, but I can't hold three of these parts in one vice. So what I might want to do is do exactly what I'm doing right now. Set up three vices, set up the stock in each one of the vices, and then uh, make three parts every time I hit the cycle start button. A couple of the challenges that we might experience here is getting these vices exactly spaced like I have them in CAD and everything perfectly collinear between the vice jaws and the stock located properly and all that kind of stuff is a little bit on the tricky side to do. So rather than worrying about that, what we can do is we can put our three vices up on the table and we can uh, indicate in the device jaw so that we know that we're square, so that we know that we're trammed in. Um, but we don't need to necessarily worry about the spacing, and we don't even really need to worry about um, these jaw faces being co-planar uh, to each other. We're going we're gonna to do this inside of the setup instead. So what we can do is we can program this block as being G54 in the machine. We'll program this block of stock as being G55 and we'll program this block of stock as being G56. However, I only want to program this part once, and then I want Fusion to export the proper code for me. So let's take a look at how we can do that inside of the setup menu. I'm gonna go ahead and choose a new setup. And I'm even though I have all three of the parts on here, I'm gonna pretend like I just have the one part on here. So what I want to do is tell Fusion the part that I'm interested in machining. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on nothing where it says model. I'm gonna grab that as my model, and it shrinks a bounding box to that. Um, if I want, I can certainly uh, tell Fusion what my fixtures are here. Uh, we, won't, we won't worry about that for right now. Let's just move over to the stock tab. For my mode here, I'm gonna say I wanna make it from a solid, and I've already got the solid model that I wanna start from, so I'll just go ahead and click on that. And there you can see that uh, Fusion recognized that as a solid body. I'll go back to the setup. Another thing I want to do is change where I want the work ordinance system to be located. So let's put it up there in the upper left-hand corner on this one. So I got my work ordinance system set, and so everything's pretty standard from here, but the changes I wanna talk about are going to be on the post process tab. So here is where we can set our machine work ordinance system. If you're not familiar, if you enter a zero here, you're gonna get a G54. And if you enter a one here, you're gonna get a G54. So you might say, oh, no big deal, that'll be fine. Um, this can be one of those areas where this is actually a big deal. And let me show you what I mean by that. If I want to run multiple vices as I have right here, I'm gonna tell Fusion what I want to, uh, that I wanna do multiple work order system offsets. So I'm gonna check this box. And Fusion asks me, how many instances of parts do I have up on the table? So I'm gonna say, I have three parts that I'd like to make. And I'm gonna increment the work order system by one. So let's take a look at where having zero here can maybe bite us. So uh, the first work coordinate system is zero and that's gonna give me a G54. Then I'm gonna increment zero by one. So zero plus one is one and that is also going to give me a G54. One plus one is going to give me a two and that's going to give me a G55. So in this case, what would happen is I would run this very first part once, twice. I do the second part once and I never ever get to the third part. And that's why I recommend what you do with the work ordinance system is you set this to be one. Then I can right click on this and say, make that my default. And now let's look at what we're gonna do. So one is gonna give me G54. One plus one gives me a G55. Uh, or two gives me a G55. Two plus one uh, gives me a, is a three, so that gives me a G56. So I'm gonna run one, two, three. I'm gonna get all my parts here set up that way. So. Um, it's easy to always change this whatever you want to, but I, I recommend you set it to one and that way you never have to worry about forgetting to uh, change it to one when you do a, a pattern like this and running the first vice twice. Now once we do that, we have other options. Um, do we want to preserve the order, which means machine in the order that we, you know, so face the first part, face the second part, face the third part. Rough the first part, rough the second part, rough the third part. We can uh, order by operation, or another favorite one here, and you can read the descriptions, we can order by tool. So it runs the tool as efficiently as possible without having to do a bunch of tool changes uh, in between operations. So I'm gonna go ahead and say I'd like to order this by tool, and I'm just gonna hit okay. 
Now, all I simply have to do is let's add a facing tool path to one of these parts. So I'm gonna say 2D in face. We'll go grab a tool out of one of our sample libraries. Let's grab the tutorial inch, grab our face mill. And I am pretty well set up on this. Maybe I'll give a little bit of a stock offset that I can do very minimal information and hit the OK button and get a facing tool path that I like. Um, so what I can do now is I have that tool path just so we can take a look at it. I'm going to click on my setup and let's go ahead and do a post process. We'll use a generic cost and we'll just run with the defaults here and we'll hit the save button and replace that. Should get brackets to pop up on my screen. And now if we look, we're going to see face one is a G54, face two is a G55 and face three is a G56. Uh, so that's a really easy way to go ahead and uh, run multiple vices inside of Fusion without having to program each individual part. Hopefully the little trick about um, setting our work coordinate system to be our, our work coordinate system to be one here in the post process tab will help you to not run into the point where you run the first part twice. I remember getting a lot of calls on this when I used to help doing some tech support on this particular issue where people didn't understand this. So um, I recommend you set that to one, make it the default, and uh, forget about it from there. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, and we'll have a good day.